The Books from Birth program serves as a local affiliate of the Dolly Parton Imagination Library. We mail books each month from birth to age five to children who reside in Shelby County. This program is available to all children in Shelby County. That was the heart of Ms. Parton when she began the program in Sevier County. She wants the program to be available to every child regardless of their social economic status. So in Shelby County each month, there are 45,000 children on average receiving a book in the mail and we boast that we are the largest affiliate in the world. We went to have Rennie in the hospital. They had given us a packet and in that packet it had the information for the Books for Birth program and filled out the information and then it started you know what became years worth of getting books both for her and then when we had the boys Seth and Evan. If you go to the store and you look for a children's book, you're looking at like $17 or something like that. And you know, you're tight on funds at that point. So it was really helpful that we were consistently getting those books. In fact, that we were getting two books for the twins because the, you know, there were two. We know that by age three, a child's brain grows up to 80% of the full size of the human brain. So during these critical brain development years, it's important to get books into the hands of children. It not only aids them in kindergarten readiness, but it's also important for a child's vocabulary development, as well as developing early reading skills. Llama Llama Red Pajama in the Dark. It's like sitting down and eating dinner. You know, you have a bonding. There's a commensal. You're sitting down together with your family and you're having that bonding time. And I think reading is really important because I think later on in life, when children grow up, they develop a love of books and they connect with that, the connection they have with their parents. But when they're older, they won't depart from it. You want to dot dot? Would you like to dot dot? There you go. I work with the one and two year olds. Dot dot dot. They have curious minds. But when I first got my younger group, they weren't talking. So, you know, it was like I'm asking them, well, what's your name? And what color is this? Do you like this? He wrote this on today so we can conversate with our friends. We're going to have one day a week where the children will wear these vests. And so the little vests have the little snaps in the back. It has a little pocket where you insert the little recorder in. And they put the vest on and they go about their day. Let's go call mommy. Lena Grove stands for Language Environment Analysis. And so what Lena Grow is, is it's a 10 week professional development program for our teachers. So Lena Grow allows teachers to use talking tips and conversational starters to begin those conversations and to realize the importance of having those engaging conversations. Every week, teachers get a report back that shows the conversational turns. It's like a serve and return. It's back and forth and change in conversation. So it's just keeping that conversation going about what that child is interested in at that time. You have a green square. Uh-oh. I was excited and nervous at the same time because it was something new. Because we think we know that we're communicating with our kids, but we really not quite for sure. We already been through the, the Lena Grove training. When we first started, we uh, was concerned about two of our kids um, because they really didn't say nothing. Me and my co-teacher had to work together, come up with a strategy to actually build on their vocabulary. We would work with as like as a group with the kids, and then like one on one. And then at the end, we were shocked that they actually were saying sounds and words at the end because it shows on our reports. What does your baby know? I saw a boost in confidence with teachers. I think I see a level of wanting to more professionalize what they do. Big and small. 
when doing the training, I also took it back to my child because she's the same age as the kids I work with. So it kind of helped me really communicate with her. For me, when they get it, I get it. And it gives me a sense of this is the why behind why I do what I do and why I love it so much. Good morning, everyone. It's a great day at Porter Leith. It's a great day in Memphis, and it's a great day right here in Frazier. Uh, my name is Sean Lee, and I'm the president of Porter Leith, and I have the honor of welcoming all of you uh, to the ribbon cutting ceremony for the Porter Leith Early Childhood Academy right here in Frazier. And today we're continuing to be safe. It's a pandemic and uh, most of you are joining online and we're grateful for that streaming on YouTube and Facebook. And many of you are probably seeing this in uh, recorded fashion. And so we're glad that you've tuned in. We're also fortunate to have uh, some friends and staff uh, in the audience today. And we're grateful for that. I know we have two elected officials with us, uh, Commissioner Brooks uh, from the Shelby County Commission we're grateful for you being here. And I, I believe I saw board member Woods. Thank you very much for being here. We appreciate their support uh, very much. For those of you new to Porter Leith, uh, we've been serving the Mid-South since 1850. And our mission is empowering children and families to achieve healthy, optimal, and independent lifestyles. This year, our services will touch more than 45,000 children and families throughout Shelby County, as well as DeSoto County and Fayette County nearby. All of our programs uh, create positive interventions to help bring families out of poverty. And for about 171 years, that's been our history, trying to plug in and engage with families wherever we can. But for so long in our history, we handled children after the family started to deteriorate and after children started missing developmental milestones. And so for the longest time we said, how can we go upstream? How can we get to children and families earlier? And so for the last 20 years, our focus has really been on creating really positive early childhood experiences for children throughout the community. We continue to serve older children, but we know that we have to get to children before they get to kindergarten and that's what we're doing today. We've refined that model over 20 years of work to really squeeze every ounce of outcome with the limited funds that are available for programs like these. We make them really effective and we deliver children to kindergarten ready to learn. Importantly, in that lessons, in the lessons we learned over those 20 years, we learned that it's about the family. It's never just about rescuing a child out of poverty. You can't do that you have to work on the entire family. And that's what we do across all of our programs and our services. That's our why, and we think our why makes a tremendous difference. Uh, there's somebody with us today uh, that I'd like to invite forward to speak that definitely understands the importance of investing early so that children enter kindergarten ready to learn. And that's Dr. Antonio Burt, the Chief Academic Officer for Shelby County Schools. Dr. Burt. Good evening, everyone. This really is an exciting day, not only for Memphis, but also for the entire county. I couldn't think of a better way to really kick off a Friday than thinking about and talking about the importance of early childhood and experience. As a new parent, you know, I have a bubbly two-year-old that really teaches me something different every day. But when I look at his eyes, I also think about students that I've served as being a principal and how important it is to really not only invest in the child, but also the community and also the families. So as we think about early childhood education, but more importantly, how do we transform Memphis and Shelby County as a whole? How can we ensure that we break those generational barriers or generational challenges that often plague underserved communities? Well, when you walk into a facility that's state of the art, when you give a community hope, when you let kids know that we value you and we believe in you by merely 
saying that we want you to enter into the best facility and we're willing to put resources behind that, that's a step in the right direction. So I definitely want to commend the staff of Porter Leaf, commend those individuals that played a role in really ensuring that this building and other buildings like this exist in Memphis and Shelby County. But more importantly, I want to commend everyone that's looking forward to transforming and changing the city of Memphis to the place that it rightfully should be as one of those cities that serves as a modern day example for other cities. Thank you all. And I look forward to supporting. Thank you very much, Dr. Burt. We, we appreciate your leadership and your words today. About 15 years ago, we had a dream, and the dream was to create really special state-of-the-art um, early childhood centers for children throughout Memphis. We thought that a demonstration project where you poured everything you could into a center from facility to program to people would really get the attention of the community, both in Memphis and beyond, to make sure that uh, investments in early care continued and grew. In 2014, we were fortunate enough to find another like-minded partner in Shelby County Schools when they became grantee for Head Start. And they immediately embraced the vision of how can we build these facilities? How can we um, move on from some facilities that have been in the system for uh, well past their useful life. And so that jump started the planning and uh, then we got to work raising money. And so we were able to open the first center in 2017 in South Memphis uh, called the Early Childhood Academy One. And so that facility met all of our wildest expectations. It, it really exceeded those expectations. Hundreds of families have been served since then. Thousands of hours of coaching of teachers of daycare owners and operators. Uh, we invested in a really important, vital community in South Memphis, and we were able to transition out of a, an older Head Start facility into a modern facility uh, like the one we're here today. The impact was so strong that the community continued to respond. And um, so we opened up a new capital campaign, and I'm pleased to say, in addition to one, and today we're opening two, soon we'll open Academy Three in partnership with the University of Memphis in Orange Mound and Academy Four will be in the Hickory Hill East Memphis area and will open in late 2022. By then we will have transformed the Head Start infrastructure in this community to where it's the finest in the country and we're glad to be a partner with the Shelby County Schools in that work. Because of the generosity of Memphis, I'm really pleased to say that we open today with zero debt this building is completely paid for. What that means is that money for programming can go to programming. It can go to families, it can go to children, and it won't go to uh, maintain an older facility or pay a lease payment. And we always want that for our children. A lot of people say, well, why Frazier? And I always say, why not Frazier? Frazier is a wonderful community. I encourage all of you that are watching today or, or uh, seeing the recording, check out what's going on. We really wanted to plug in because there's so many civic leaders, elected officials, uh, uh, faith leaders that are doing some amazing work in Frazier. There are 45,000 residents here and you ask any one of them and they're very proud of their community. I hope that we've built something that uh, will be a point of pride of them for a long time to come. So now we'd like to show you some video and uh, hear from friends that uh, about what impact they think this facility is going to make on Frazier. in Fraser about Porter Leaf Children's Center moving into the Fraser community with a brand new
new academy for our children. We have continued to look at places where we can have a quality facility for our children. We're so proud to have Port of Leaf as part of the Frazier community. It's been a long time coming and uh, something the Frazier community is very, very proud of. I actually grew up in Frazier. Um, and I remember what it used to look like before Port Elite uh, came and broke ground here. In my opinion, it's the most uh, beautiful facility in Fraser. Just a little biased. Like, oh my God. <laughs> it was everything, the outside just took my attention. I'm like, this is a major upgrade. I was blown away uh, by the transformation of the property itself. I actually saw uh, when there was just groundbreaking and we were both wondering, going on over there and we just kind of bypassed it and as time went by we actually saw structures so we were super excited when we came around and we saw that. Port Leaf has a long history of serving our community and our children. We've already had people in the community ask us what is that building? What is going on with those colors? We are a early childhood facility and we wanted it to be colorful. We want it to be the bright spot on the block. It's going to mean a lot to our community having a facility like this, everything that goes with it. I just love everything about this school. So with Lauren, she's everything with the school. She's learning. Port Elite is teaching her and I really appreciate it. I'm happy we got a new school. One of the family goals that I had when I came to Port Elite with Emily was to develop her socially. I worked with the family counselor and her teachers and they actually did a lot of work with her developing or helping develop her socially, emotionally. Now you probably can't stop her from talking when at first she would not speak to anyone that she didn't know. What do you think about her new school? It's awesome. That was a really big deal for us and I'm really thankful that they were able to assist. I believe that it is going to do wonderful wonders for Fraser. We look forward to seeing the great results that are going to be accomplished down here at Port Elite. Welcome to Fraser, Port Elite. We're looking forward to it. My name is Jason Dombrowski. I'm the chairman of the board for Porter Leaf. And I'm excited to be at this beautiful building in Fraser today. Uh, on behalf of myself and the Porter Leaf Board of Directors, I'd like to welcome everyone to our latest step in the journey to ensure quality and equitable early childhood experiences for families. We're beyond proud of this academy and the work we're doing. Our exemplary staff of teachers, family services staff, and dedicated professionals who work collaboratively to see that every child leaves our facilities ready for kindergarten. Through our culture of shared governance, our board's preschool committee ensures that not only our program outcomes are strong, but that families are involved in every level of decision making. With that, I'd now like to invite Dr. Kathy Evans, the chair of our preschool committee, to share more about how families helped in creating this wonderful space with children in mind. Thank you. Good morning, Port Leaf staff, board members, uh, friends, elected officials, and members of the Fraser community. This is a great time to be a young child. It has been my pleasure to have been involved with Head Start programs throughout uh, much of my professional career, and it is an honor to serve on the board of directors of Port Leith and to also chair its preschool services committee. We know that high quality early childhood programs shape young children's cognitive, social, and emotional development and place them on a path to success from kindergarten through adulthood. The level of quality of our programs and the evidence-based outcomes 
of our programs are consistently impressive. High quality preschool programs are vital to the continuous improvement of the lives of children and families in our community. We also know that families engaged in their children's education are able to impact their children's lives far into adulthood. Engaging families to help us best prepare their child is one of our major ingredients for success. Through this shared governance, we are able to get real-time input on what works best for children and for families so that by partnering, we can all achieve success. Please watch the video for an inside look at how the best program in the best place with the best partnerships and platform all combine to make our preschool programs so special. I am Tawanda Pete Smith, Head Start Director for Porter Lee. What makes this place special? Is it the upgraded facilities where classrooms are specifically designed for preschool aged children? Surely it's our high quality curriculum, which focuses on big experiences. These experiences are centered around children's natural curiosity that encourages children to explore, play, and learn. And our staff, nurturing, child focus, and patient. No family pays for vision, speech, hearing, or mental health screenings or services. Family service workers collaborate with parents to create family partnership agreements. We have a strong emphasis on parent-driven center activities. So let me share about the colors you will see in our infant and toddler and preschool wing. The blue wing represents trust, dignity, and intelligence, all words that prepare our children for their Head Start experience. The yellow wing represents optimism, energy, and positivity, all social and emotional feelings that aid children in being kindergarten ready. So, the best kept secret in Frasier is no longer a secret. I am so excited about the Academy at Fraser. We were trying to think about what would the theme be? And so we came up with music. And as you know, children love music. Every part of this building has music just all in it. And so at the front desk, you have the guitar strings. But when you come on the Early Head Start wing, everything is designed for a child that's between six weeks and three years old. We have two qualified teachers in every classroom, and in the classroom, we have eight children. So our ratio is two teachers to every eight children. We can make sure that we are giving the children the attention that they need. We are partnering with our families. We empower our families. We're looking at what goals the family wants to achieve, and then we also have goals that the teachers are achieving with the child. We have an infant classroom, we have young toddler, and then we have our transitioning classroom that's for our older toddlers. In the classroom, you'll see the low sinks, you'll see the smaller tables. We focus in Early Head Start on free play. And the reason we want them to have free play because that's a part of their learning development. Oh, there's so many wonderful things in this building. One of my favorites is there is a stage at the end of the hall and it has these big round lights at the bottom on the stage. So we can have classroom wherever we go. We are a early childhood facility. We want it to be the bright spot on the block and I believe that we're going to be a continuation of the Bright Spot in Frazier. Good morning, and thanks to each of you that have joined us personally and virtually. I don't know about you, but I think the real VIPs are in the room right next door, and they'll be joining us very soon. So our children and our parents are here. So would you would stop for a moment and give them an applause for taking time out of their schedule to be with us this morning. While we've experienced this just a little over three years ago with our first academy on Alice, 
to have an opportunity a second time to witness and be a part of the development of a center that's designed with children and with families at the forefront of our minds and our hearts, it's an indescribable feeling. Each of us can all recall that special moment when a child has approached us, Dr. Burt, with that sparkle in their eye, and they may say, do you like my new shoes? Or do you like my new backpack? Envision with me for a moment as our children enter into their brand new school and they tell their parents and their family about their brand new school. Now we can all agree that it's not necessarily the building that's important, but it's the interactions and the engagement in each of our classrooms. It's the engagement with the awesome teachers, our family service staff, our cooks as they peer through the kitchens, our home visitors, facilities, and our managers. Envision teachers engaging with children in meaningful activities in these classroom spaces that was developed just for them. Experimenting with the musical elements on the playground and exploring creative spaces in the hallways. Beyond the beautiful center, we, can all, we are all committed and we are definitely all working towards the common goal of ensuring that our children are developing socially, emotionally, physically, and cognitively. We're not just preparing children for kindergarten. We're preparing children for life beyond kindergarten. We're not just here just for a facility, but we're here to make sure that our children are ready for life and what life has to bring them. We all understood that before we left out last year, we were able to see children that were met 72% of school readiness based on their assessment data before the pandemic. For the first time in three years, we have, three, we have data that supports the early Head Start children that participated in the program for three years achieved 75%. And that means that they were ready for kindergarten. It is these type of results, supports, and innovation that's needed for our children and families and our community. I'd like not to now like you to join me in watching the next video and turn your attention to one of Port Elise's many innovative programs about our teacher excellence program led by Dr. Kelly Nichols. <music> Teacher Excellence Program, we serve all early childhood educators across the city of Memphis by uh, providing job embedded support, coaching, and um, community early childhood conferences twice a year. Now we're in our third year of providing this type of support. We have had to hire more instructional coaches to meet the demand. So we needed this space so we could come together as instructional coaches, collaborate. Another special, special area that teachers just love are the observation decks. With this facility, we can actually go into an observation deck during the training, we don't have to wait until we go back into the classroom. So we can take teachers down into the observation deck and the coach can go into the classroom and model the, tech, the strategy or technique, or they can observe the teacher who's in the classroom modeling the strategy. I have the awesome opportunity to help teachers, students, and families learn how to manage and regulate their feelings and emotion. We need something that is a part of curricula that emphasizes togetherness, empathy, resilience, working together. And so social emotional learning provides that particular aspect of education in classrooms and beyond the classroom. Really it becomes a culture um, within a program because you want social emotional learning to begin from the time of family or a child steps foot in the door of a school or a program. What we've learned with all the research um, with social emotional health is that building a relationship with that child is the number one indicator um, that will help to build that child's long lasting relationship with others as well as the teacher. Exploratorium is a space where the child gets to go and 
may or may not see some of the manipulatives that they have in the classroom. So they work with the, the child for a 20-minute session, playing activities, doing activities, also working on that social skill. But they're excited to go and they know they're going to get an opportunity to talk with their teacher and to learn something new. So that is a wonderful um, space that we have here um, where teachers and children are allowed to really engage in a very special, innovative way. We recognize that this partnership with the teacher impacts every child in the classroom. Every single student um, benefits from any training the teacher receives and our ultimate goal is that every single student walks out of the classroom and is prepared for kindergarten um, socially, emotionally, as well as um, academically. And we know that being prepared for kindergarten um, is, means success for the child, but also means success ultimately for that family. Well, I hope today that we painted a, a picture of not just an amazing facility, but some amazing professionals and supporters and board members that make all of this uh, magic happen. Uh, as we move to closure, I'd like to remind you of three things that I hope you walk away from today. And uh, as you tune out, you think on. First, uh, early childhood experiences should not be dictated the quality of those by your zip code we should demand equity in early childhood that every experience, no matter where it is, should be excellent and prepare you for, for kindergarten. Second, this program's way more than bricks and mortar. Now, you can build all the fancy buildings you want, but if you fill them with people that can't carry that program forward and you don't have amazing partners, then it won't work. So it takes all of that uh, to make the magic happen. And third, Frazier is a wonderful, vital community. This building represents $12 million worth of investment in this community, and I hope others will come by, come see Frazier, and uh, think about doing the same. Put your program here, invest your business here, uh, do work here. Uh, it's really important. So we're about to cut our ceremonial ribbon. I have a few uh, quick thank yous. I want to start with our board of trustees. Our chair is Laura Turner. Our board of directors, uh, thank you so much for letting us do this. You met uh, Mr. Dombrowski, but we also have our vice chair here, Marlo Martin, and our secretary, Sophie Duffel, are here as well. And we appreciate all of our, our board members, including Dr. Evans, who spoke to you today. I want to thank the 640 amazing professionals that make up the Porter Lee team. I, I know you're watching today, and uh, a lot of our senior team is here. Uh, these are great people that do amazing work, and I'm so proud of them. Our development team did a great job today uh, putting this event on, so I want to thank them as well. Uh, I want to thank our, our partners in Head Start, uh, Shelby County Schools, Dr. Ray, Dr. Burt, Ms. Gordon. Thank you so much for the privilege of being your partner. I want to thank our friends from uh, HHS, the Office of Head Start, especially our uh, Region 4 friends. Uh, we appreciate all the support you give us. We can't wait for you to come to town to take your very own tour uh, of the building. The planning team, we put in hundreds of hours and there are too many people, families, uh, children to mention, but thank you for all those Zoom meetings and calls. Uh, you did a great job and uh, we couldn't have gotten to this point uh, without your help. Our builder was Flintco, we thank them. Our amazing architects from Omaha, RDG Planning and Design. Our lead is Ed Buglowitz, but he's got a great team and we thank him for that, uh, that work. The supporters that made this capital campaign uh, come to fruition, um, we really appreciate you. Uh, we won't let you down, the trust that you've given to us. Um, the families, I see them in the back of the room and uh, the trust that they put on us when they walk through that door and leave their children with us is tremendous. And we're grateful for you uh, believing in us and certainly the most important people in the room are our little ones. So I've got some friends here and I would love for them to come up. I would love for our special guests that are gonna cut the ribbon with us to come forward. I've got a ribbon that needs to be cut to open their new school. Hi friends, come on.
Thank you so much. That's going to conclude our uh, ceremony today. Uh, for those of you online, we are uh, grateful that you joined us. Please call us, email us. We would love to see you and host you for a tour. Uh, friends that are here, uh, please explore. Friends, uh, thank you so much. You did an amazing job. Let's say thank you to our friends. Thank you all, and we will see you very soon at the Early Childhood Academy in Fraser. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.